Five Senate Republicans, all but five of them, doubled down on the House plan to kill Medicare as we know it, giving Democrats what they think is their best weapon to bludgeon the Republicans in 2012. U.S. Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida is chair of the Democratic National Committee. She joins us right now. You're smiling, and I think I know why. I mean, you got 40 Republicans to sign on to the, uh, the death march here. Are they, I guess Republicans are more united than Democrats, but they did stick to the team there. Well, and on top of that, Tim Pawlenty t today, uh, one of their leading presidential candidates, actually said that if that plan, if the Ryan plan to end Medicare as we know it was put on his desk as president, he committed that he would sign it into law. So, uh, I mean, I think it's really, uh, it couldn't be more clear that Republicans want to end Medicare as we know it and yank the safety net out from under our senior citizens, deny them affordable health care, and, uh, and Democrats want to make sure that we can sit down around the table with Republicans, work to save Medicare, make sure that we we can add to more to the long-term security of Medicare like we did with the Affordable Care Act when we added 12 years of solvency to it. We can do that and more. We just need a willing partner to sit down and compromise with us. Well, you've been a willing partner. You're a producer of our show now, it turns out, because here is that clip you recommend we bring up. Here is Republican presidential candidate Tim Pawlenty talking to reporters <laughs> in New Hampshire. When asked if he supported the Republican Medicare plan, here's what he said. Let's listen. We'll have our own plan. It'll have many similarities uh, to Congressman Ryan's plans, but it'll have some differences. And the Medicare part of our plan will have some differences, too. Uh, it'll have some similarities also. But if I can't have my own plan, I'm, as president, I'll have my own plan. If I can't have that and the bill came to my desk and I had to choose between signing or not Congressman Ryan's plan, of course I'd sign it. Congresswoman, you represent some people down there. I, I was just down in Florida, by the way, in the Keys. I love that state. But in your district, a bit <laughs> above, I guess you're a bit above Miami. Uh, do you have anybody in your district, Republican, Independent, or Democrat, who's ever called your constituents worker, your constituent staffer, and said, I'd rather not get the Medicare benefits that are coming <laughs> to me at the age of 65? Has anybody said, I don't want Medicare? I don't care how right wing they are. No. In fact, the, the folks that have been coming to my town hall meetings lately have been very, very concerned about the potential for Medicare to be ended. Uh, the, the Republicans, that's what the Republicans have pr proposed. And I think it's interesting that Tim Pawlenty wasn't willing the other day when he was in Florida on a swing through my, through my state to say uh, what the answer to that question was on whether he would sign it. And when he left Florida, now suddenly he's willing to answer it. Why wouldn't he stand up in front of Flor Florida voters and say uh, whether he would sign it into law as president? because he knows that it's unbelievably unpopular that Americans support Medicare, that Floridians in, in the swing state that we are are strongly supportive of Medicare and wouldn't want to be supportive of a presidential candidate, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, that would, that would end it. Let's take a look at what the president had to say. He was overheard. I don't think he was embarrassed by this at all, but he was overheard conversing with, uh, with uh, Paul Ryan. This is Bill Clinton, uh, former president, talking with uh, the congressman we're talking about, the Republican who pushed this plan to basically get rid of uh, Medicare as we know it. Let's listen to the former president talking to the man in question, Paul Ryan. I'm glad we won this race in New York, but I hope the Democrats don't use it as a... Uh an excuse to do nothing. I guess it's going to sink into paralysis is what's yeah. going to happen. And you know the math. I mean, it's just, we, we, knew, we knew we were putting ourselves out there, but you got to start this. you got to get out there. you got to get, get this thing moving. If you don't want to talk about it, yeah. I'll, be, yeah. I'll give you a call. Great, thanks. Well, there's Bill Clinton in a nonpartisan mode. Now look at him today. Uh, here he is yesterday, by the way, talking about the same subject. Let's look to the president, former president. I'm afraid that the Democrats will draw the conclusion that because Congressman Ryan's proposal, I think, is not the best one, that we shouldn't do anything. And I completely disagree with that. I think there are lots of things you can do to bring down Medicare costs. Well, that opens the question. If the Republicans do recognize that they made a mistake and are in a negotiating posture before the next election, I think McConnell is, by the way, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate. He does not want this next year's election to be about their plan on Medicare. Will you, as a leading Democrat, be open to a negotiation for the right kind of fix to our entitlement programs? Absolutely. And that's what President Obama suggested a few weeks ago when he gave his speech on his vision for the, the, the 2012 budget and the, 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 uh, dealing with the debt ceiling vote and making sure that we can focus on deficit reduction, that we have to have uh, some 
bipartisan consensus on how to deal with entitlement reform. And I hope that the message that the Republicans got from Tuesday's election and from the election in Jacksonville, Florida, where we elected a Democratic mayor for the first time in more than 20 years and the state house race in New Hampshire in a solidly red district that the Democrat won 58 to 42. Uh, all of those uh, elections have turned on the, the radical proposals that, that voters are pushing back on against Republicans. And I hope that the Republicans take that message and sit down at the table with us and work out the long-term solvency of Medicare together. Your knowledge base has begun so wide now. You know about every race <laughs> in the country, Congress. I keep thinking of you as a congresswoman, but now you're That's chair of the party. Up for. <laughs> you know all this stuff. Thank you very much, and have a nice weekend uh, as too. we celebrate. In fact, Happy we Memorial honor Day. we honor the people that have served this country with unbelievable courage and patriotism. Let's go right now to Congressman Jack Kingston, a Republican from Georgia, sir. You've been in Congress a while now. I've always watched your career. You're tough.